Good to see each and every one of you today. It's good to be together to worship our Lord and to know of his uh, deep presence in our lives and that indeed he is uh, leading each of us. So we've been uh, talking over the last uh, few weeks about what it means to be a disciple. It's the very discussion that we need to have, uh, the very discussion that needs to be uppermost in mind and heart needs to be the sort of discussion we need to have as a church together, what it means to be a disciple. We, we've honed in on that, certainly throughout this entire sermon series. We, we particularly did that last week in talking about uh, what it means to abide in Christ. We, we do that again today as we consider w- what it means to be changed by Christ. And to tip our hand, we'll be talking next week as we wrap things up about what it means to take action for Christ. Now, those, um, those three uh, matters of abiding in Christ, of, um, of finding ourselves changed by Christ, and taking action for Christ make a, a really nice acronym, acronym, A-C-T, abiding in Christ, changed by Christ, and taking action for Christ. These things essentially are what it means to be a disciple. Change is by, um, by no means easy, yet it is necessary in, in every way. Change is tough, but necessary in all ways. Change is one of the, the constants in life. We are forever having to adapt and change. We've, we've had to do that like crazy through these months of the pandemic. Let's hear some notable quotes about change and transformation and how that plays into each of our lives. One uh, I ran across has this to say, great things never come from your comfort zone. It's always tough to move beyond our comfort zone, but yet if we, uh, we don't move beyond places of comfort, we will never fundamentally change and become different. The sort of people that God would have us to be. I like this from Rick uh, Godwin, who is the pastor of the Summit Christian Center in San Antonio, Texas. He has this to say about change. I think it's a, it's a very uh, challenging word. One reason people resist change, he says, is because they focus on what they have instead of what they have to gain. What we have versus what we have to gain. And as we consider that stuff of what we have to gain, it always takes some sort of step or leap of faith. We'd much rather hold on to what we have rather than to venture out into the unknown. And then Max Lucado puts it well and really does uh, bring ourselves to a good focus as it relates to uh, changed by Christ. He, uh, He says this, you change your life by changing your heart. You change your life by changing your heart. And as we consider the, the experience of following Christ, it is always a matter of the heart, how our hearts might be chasing after Christ. And in, and in following after Him, finding that He is the one that brings a heart change to each of our lives. True change never happens unless the heart is involved. So the Christian faith is, is all about change. We, we call that new life in Christ. Paul writes about such things. And in 2 Corinthians 5.17, we, we quote this often. It is, it is so fundamental to, to understanding what goes on as we give our lives to Jesus. Therefore, if anyone is in Christ, that person is a new creation, The old has gone, the new has come. In Romans 12, verses 1 through 2, Paul talks about that sort of change, that, that sort of change that comes when we resolutely give ourselves to Jesus. He talks about that sort of change in in terms of transformation. What a significant word, life that is transformed. 
life that is always being transformed as a, as a matter of process. Paul's statement in, in Romans 12, 1 and 2 is, a, is one that speaks to what it means to be a disciple, what it means to be changed by Christ. So let's hear this from God's Word as we read Romans 12, verses 1 and 2. Therefore, I urge you, brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy, to offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and pleasing to God. This is your true and proper worship. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind, that you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, His good, pleasing, and perfect will. This is God's Word, and may it be a deep and abiding blessing to each of us, not only as we hear this Word read, but as we make effort now to take our lives and apply them to it. May God be with each of us. I like the, the story told of the, of the chicken and the pig who were considering opening, opening a, a restaurant together. You may have heard this story. The, the chicken said to the pig, we can offer the best breakfast in town. I'll provide the eggs, you provide the bacon. Well, the pig thought that over for a moment and said, I don't think so. For, for you, that best breakfast in town represents an offering. For me, it is total commitment. Well, that's what we're talking about today when it comes to being a follower of Christ, when it comes to being a Christ follower, when it comes to offering ourselves to Christ and seeking His transformation in all things. Being a disciple means being totally committed. There really isn't any halfway when it comes to discipleship. In talking about such things, Paul uses the image of a sacrifice. Now, in the Old Testament, there really was no such thing as partial sacrifice. You were either all in or you weren't in at all. Abraham was, was all in when he... Was, uh, was called to sacrifice his son Isaac. Of course, as we know, God provided a lamb for the sacrifice. Abraham was all in. We, uh, we know that uh, in, in the New Testament, though, the, the rich young ruler, upon asking Jesus what he could do to inherit eternal life, was told to go and sell everything that he had and then come and follow Jesus. And we know from Scripture that that young man walked away sorrowfully, not willing to commit, not fully in by any stretch of the imagination. I urge you, writes Paul, in view of God's mercy, and God's mercy is, is, is key and critical to all this, His mercy, His grace, His love showering upon us makes all this possible. In view of God's mercy... You offer your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God. Eugene Peterson, in his, Peter, in his paraphrase of the Bible, has Paul saying, so, so here's what I want you to do. God helping you. Again, that stuff of, of God's mercy being involved in our lives. God helping you. Take your everyday, ordinary life, you're, you're sleeping, eating, going to work, walking around life, and place it before God as an offering. What a great statement. Giving our all to Christ as a living sacrifice. In, in offering our, our bodies as, as a living sacrifice, we are to present ourselves to God. We are to submit ourselves to His way. We are to do His bidding instead of our own. It really comes down to that. And by so doing, we will find ourselves living out God's will more and more. Pastor and author uh, James Merritt talks about presentation before revelation. 
Hear that. Presentation before revelation. As we present ourselves to God as living sacrifices, in, in the sort of way that, that Paul talks about, we will begin to hear from God more and more. We will find ourselves challenged by God more and more. We will find ourselves drawn by God more and more. We will be more attuned to what God wants for our lives, who he wants us to be and what he wants us to do. In helping us along to that end, Paul is quick to share what not to do. He, he says very clearly, do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. Do not be conformed to the pattern of this world. When it comes to the influences of the world, we are up against it all the time. We are bombarded by, uh, by the media. We're influenced by friends. We're swayed by things that go on uh, at work, and, and that just begins the list. We, we are uh, clearly influenced by the world. From our earliest days uh, on the earth, uh, <clears throat> peer pressure has, has had a profound effect. Peer pressure is, has always uh, had its way with us. And in, and in that mix of, of always being pressured by those who are around us, it's, it's tough to keep a sense of our own identity, much less our identity in Jesus. It's tough for young people to do that. It's tough for people of all ages to do that. It is never comfortable standing out. It's never comfortable cutting against the grain. It's never comfortable heading it in a, in a different direction than everybody else is going. During the pandemic, we have, have um, heard a lot about herd uh, immunity. For our purposes today, let's turn that phrase around just a bit and talk about herd mentality and its sway upon our lives. And let's face it, it's, it's there day in and, and day out. It's all too easy to do what everybody else is doing. Going along with the flow is, is easy to do. It is tough to overcome. Really, it's so tough that it takes the very power and presence of Christ to help us overcome. That's why it's so important for us to, to, to come together, to do so regularly, to encourage one another about the fact that it is okay to be different, to be different, to be marked by Christ in, in such a way that we are indeed different than the draw of the world, that we're not so much conforming to the pattern of the world. We, we all know about the chameleon. The chameleon changes uh, colors based on circumstance and, and what's going on a, a, a around it. It's a survival mechanism just to, to sort of uh, blend in, if you will. We're, we're not, uh, not created to, to simply survive like the chameleon, just to sort of blend in. We're, we're created to live and to live abund <coughs> abundantly. Christ himself said in John 10.10, 10, I have come that you might have life and have it abundantly. So if, if conforming to the pattern of the world is not what we're to do, what do we need to do? Let, let's flip that. Just as Paul does, what, what, what do we need to do in, in order to to be as Christ would, would have us to be. We, we need to open ourselves to being transformed, to being changed. As we, as we talked about just a few minutes ago, we need to let God do his thing in our lives. It, it comes to us to be pliable. God is the potter, and we are the clay. The choir sung, sung about that just a, a, a bit ago, about how God is indeed the potter and that we are the clay, and in his hands, God is able to create things and in beautiful and wonderful ways. He is able to mold and shape our lives and in, in, in supreme ways that, that really are befitting God's good work in our lives. 
when it comes to God transforming our lives, Paul talks about the renewing of our minds. I've always found that to be important. I've always found that to be a significant statement. Paul makes a, a big deal out of, uh, out of what we think about, about the, what goes on in the, the mind. What our minds are, are stayed on goes a long way toward influencing our lives. You know that. You're living that. I'm, I'm living that day in and, and, and day out. All of that, what, what we put our minds on, really does have influence upon our lives for good and, and for bad. Paul writes in Philippians 4, 8, finally, whatever's true, whatever's noble, whatever's right, whatever's pure, whatever is lovely, whatever is admirable, if anything is excellent or praiseworthy, think about these things. These things that Paul lists, this, this, high, this, this list of, of things that are a matter of high calling, these are the things we need to think about. Thinking about such things can help but bring positive change and transformation in our lives. Paul knew that from experience. I pray that every one of us are, 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 are knowing about that transformation, the change that is wrought as we have our minds stayed upon Christ. What we're really talking about here is a matter of mind and heart. The question comes, in, in view of God's mercy, will we be open to the love of God in Jesus Christ, to the place where our hearts become not only open to Him, but they become soft toward others? open to Christ, soft toward others. What better time than now to have our, our hearts open to God? What better time to, to relate to others with, with a, a heart that is soft and, and full of love? As we all know, and as we have commented so many times, this is a, a divisive and, and very fractious time. As we relate to, to others, we do well to consider the needs of others, to put ourselves in, in their shoes and to consider things that they may be facing. There's no better time than for us to do exactly that. And in that, we'll be uh, clearly exercising what it means to be a disciple as we rightly reach out to those who are around us. When we do such things, as, as considering the needs of others, we will find ourselves bringing peace to every situation, and we'll be helping to spread God's love to everyone who indeed is around us. When it comes to transformation, the image of a, of a butterfly emerging from a cocoon comes to mind. You know, the caterpillar spins that cocoon, and when the time is right, emerges more beautiful than before. Change comes from the inside out. That's where our hearts and our minds stayed upon Christ makes such a supreme difference. Changed, transformed from the inside out as Christ changes us, moves in our lives, and does his thing not only in us, but through us. I love this prayer. It's a, it's a prayer that, that has everything to do with what we're talking about today, being changed by Christ, about being wholly dedicated to Christ, bringing about such change. It's intended to be prayed at the very beginning of the day, even before you, you get out of bed. Lord, this bed is my altar. This body is my sacrifice. As I rise to face this day, until the moment I return, I offer my life as a sacrifice to you. A living sacrifice that goes on to live sacrificially in every way before God and other people. I like this prayer as well. It's, it's a part of the Wesley Covenant service. Uh, 
it, it's often prayed at midnight, at the end of one year and at the beginning of another. It's a prayer of deep commitment to God's will, his good, pleasing, and perfect will. It's, it's an all-in sort of prayer. You've heard it before. We've, we've prayed it uh, in, in varied circumstances. Lord, make me what you will. I put myself into your hands. Put me to doing. Put me to suffering. Let me be employed for you or laid aside for you. Let me be full. Let me be empty. Let me have all things. Let me have nothing. I freely and with a willing heart give it all to your pleasure and disposal. Both of these prayers, one uh, prayed at the very beginning of the day, another prayed at the very end of the day. Uh, it, it, they are both prayers that, uh, that call on each of us to present our, ourselves as living sacrifices to the Lord, to find ourselves ready to, to live out the sort of life that, it, that is indeed a disciple that has changed by Christ, transformed in every way from the inside out. One who abides in Christ, one who is changed by Christ, and as we will learn, one who then, uh, who then goes to, to, uh, to do Christ's bidding in Christ's world, to, pro to promote uh, being active for Christ in every way. Let's join together in prayer. Lord, we pray that you receive us as living sacrifices. We pray that you strengthen us so that we are not so much conformed by the pattern of this world. We pray, Lord, that our minds and hearts would be renewed, stayed upon you, that our every desire would be to be wholly given to you. We pray, Lord, that as we are uh, given over to you, that you would work in us a great work. Change us, transform us, mold and shape us. Lord, we get a deep sense that you're not... Uh, not done with us yet, but it, in your great mercy, you seek to continue a great work that draws us not only closer to you, but to one another. So, Lord, we seek to present ourselves to you. We long to be your disciples. And in that, we are thankful that you receive us and in receiving us, we understand being deeply blessed. So, Lord, we lay ourselves in your care. and We entrust ourselves to you. We do love you and need you. And pray that we would know and experience the life that is lived in you. This prayer we make in the name of Christ our Lord, trusting in the power of that name for today's world. Amen. I can think of uh, no better song to, to sing today than, I, than the song, Lord, I want to be a Christian. I want to be a Christian in my heart. It's a song that uh, I pray we, uh, we sing uh, not only with great gusto, but with all sincerity and all intention to, to follow up by uh, by desiring and, and doing just that. I want to be a Christian. I want to be a follower of Christ. Let me invite you to stand as you're able, <coughs> as you're able and let's sing to the Lord.